Whatever you are, what we doing? Uh, I got one more song. Let's go ahead and do it. First of all, I want to say I love the Lord tonight. Amen. And as everybody else said, I don't expect no less of this. Amen. But when you come to God's house and you honor Him and hold Him up, Amen. He's going to bless you. Amen. That's just the way the gospel grows. Amen. That's just the way God works. Amen. He said, Draw down me and I'll draw down you. Amen. I'm not a slinger, but I'm going to try it. I said, go back to the day, boy. Put your foot on the land and see. Well. No sound back to the boy. He hear from me. Well, he knows things. Somebody say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. I like y'all already. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If I had to put a title to this message tonight, some of you may not like it, but you'll get over it. Praise God. Tonight's message is titled, Sleeping with the enemy. They soon forgot his works. 
They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness to their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Nathan and covered the company of Abraham, Abiram. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath lest he should destroy them. We're talking about Israel tonight. And as I mentioned earlier, how many times have we read in Scripture where Israel, God's chosen people, walked away from Him? You know, it seems like real quick they forgot that how God had delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. Amen? They forgot how they had this, and they had went through and they sacrificed lambs and took the blood of those lambs and put up on the doorposts. So that when the death angel came, that their house would be passed over. Amen. It seems like they forgot so quickly what God had done in their life. We read many times where they were in the wilderness and they were complaining. They were whining to God. They were crying and hollering, Moses, did you bring us out here to die? At one point it says they were complaining and screaming, Lord, Moses, we'd have been better off in Egypt. How many of you ever felt like that in your life? You got saved, life was going good, and then something messed up and you thought, well, I would have been better living as a sinner. That's basically what they were doing. They wanted to go back to their old horrible way of life. You know, they forgot about the experience of all the plagues that hit Egypt. They forgot about how they were spared from the plagues. They forgot how they were spared from the death of the firstborn. But they came through and hit Egypt, even taking Pharaoh's son. They forgot about all the wondrous things that God had done for them and brought them through and done through them. They forgot about the time where God split the Red Sea and they walked over on dry ground. And the Bible even says they had to hold Moses' arms up. You know, his sister Miriam. Could you imagine when they get growing, they got going over there on that dry ground? And Moses' hands going up. Could you imagine seeing Pharaoh's army coming up behind you? So many times like we do in this walk of our life. Looks like everything's going great. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere it seems like this shows up. And it messes you up. I know I've been there. But you know what that happened in this life in with, these, uh, with the Israelites? And then here comes Pharaoh and his army chasing after them. And they're crying out, complaining. After everything they just saw God do, they start complaining. That sounds like some Christians today, don't it? We pray about something, we ask God for something, when we don't see the answer we want, we start complaining and asking God, why, 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 God, aren't you letting this happen? I love this set of scripture. It may not mean much to you all, but it means a lot to me. They forgot how when they got across that Red Sea and that water was still standing tall on each side, they forgot the miracle that God did. They forgot how God saved them from Pharaoh. And as that water began, came, began to start crashing back down and completely eradicated the enemy and his army, amen? 
How many of you today can say that you wish that God would show up in the mess of your life and completely eradicate the attack of the devil upon you? Amen? Amen. That's the kind of God that I serve. When the devil shows up at you and he's writing piggyback with you, let me tell you, all you've got to do is call on Jesus. Now I'm about to get into my sermon for tomorrow, but let me tell you, when you've got the armor of God on, you know what Jesus didn't give God didn't give you a back plate? Because if you look over in Isaiah, it says God will be your rear guard. I'm glad to know that God I serve is always with me. He said he would never leave me, forsake me. He'd be with us till the end. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. The Israelites forgot about the water coming out of a rock. They forgot when they started complaining when they were getting tired of manna falling from heaven that God sent them quail. They forgot about all the miracles and they just kept complaining. And then the Bible says that they gave in to their lustful desires. How many of y'all have ever done that? Or am I the only one? They willfully and deliberately sinned Against God. And you know what Jesus, what God did? Scripture right here says He gave it to them. He gave them their desires. But it cost them leanness to their selves. I'm going to tell you, you can only chase sin so long until God turns you over to a reprobate mind. You can only play with the devil so long until you're going to get some of his little demons coming after you. Amen? I'm telling you what, if you let the devil play on the jungle gym of your mind, he's going to swing and slide all day, folks. He's going to show up and do what he wants to do. And you ever wonder when you was a sinner why the devil didn't mess with you much? Because he already had you. The Bible says with God, basically you're either with him or you're against him. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you don't know Him to the full pardon of your sin, you will die and go to a devil's hell. That's not popular preaching anymore, Brother Danny. But let me tell you, if I come by here and give you a sugar coat and Joe Osteen sermon and tell you that everything's going to be all right, that Jesus loves you, then one day when I stand before God, and then I'm going to have to answer for why you went to hell because I preached and didn't preach you the truth. Wow. I'm not calling any preachers out, but I'm just saying. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> if you're here tonight and you don't know in your heart that you're saved, you need to walk out of here changed. Tonight, what I want you to do is pray for that person that's sitting beside of you. And I'm going to tell you what you can do. As you pray for that person, how many times have y'all come to church and the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart and said, it's time for you to testify. It's time for you to tell the church, tell somebody what God has done for you in your life. How many of you have ever felt that? Now, how many of you have ever didn't do it? You know what happened? God was trying to use you to spark a fire. And you didn't let I'm going to beat up on you a little bit tonight. Is that alright? I've come back here tonight to tell somebody you've turned your back on God. You were walking with God and it seemed like everything was going great. But when you gave in to temptation, you made a mockery of God by the lifestyle that you've chose to live. How many want to claim responsibility for that? I know I have. The mistakes, the failures, the shortcomings in my life. Seems like the only thing that anybody ever knew me for was my failures. And they're always real good about shoving it back in your face. You know what? Especially all those church folks who know what you did. Amen. So that's why I want you right now praying for that neighbor that's sitting beside you. Tonight is about Jesus and making sure that when we go out of here, our hearts are right with Him. Amen? Just like Israel, 
And they forgot about the miracles of God. We have forgotten about the miracles of God in our life. I see Christian people walking around who are bound in chains. They are defeated. They are in sick and diseased. And I don't believe that's what God had for us. I believe that Christians should be some of the wealthiest people on the face of the planet. We should be the healthiest and the happiest. You know, it seems like some, how many of you in here have ever been healed of cancer? We've had people that's been healed of cancer. How many of you have went through divorce? How many of you have lost children? How many of you got cured from the cancer? How many of you has God saved your children? How many of you today you're still sitting here, you're alive and well because God had a plan for your future? Amen? Amen. I've come by to tell you tonight, we've not given God enough praise for the good things He's done in our life. We've sat idly by letting other people get the blessing that God has had in store for you. But yet we've gotten sidetracked by the attacks of the devil. We've gotten sidetracked because we want to go play with the devil on that jungle gym. We want to go swing from them monkey bars hanging out with the devil all day and not giving God the praise that is due to his name. It's time that the devil takes a back seat. I believe we are living in the last days, folks. And right now, more than any time than ever, we should be remembering what God saved us from. That life that He brought us from. Amen? When I stand before God, I don't want to look at Him and He'll look at me and say, Nate, how come you didn't remember when I spared you? When the world was crashing down around you? A thousand were falling here, ten thousand were falling there, but it never came near you. How many of us give God praise for those moments? How many of us walk off and, I, well, it just that God took his time. He didn't really do what I needed to have done. You know, I, I, I'm going to just tell you, God has paid my bills. He's kept me fed. You can see by looking at my big old belly that he's, I've not missed a meal. My bills are paid. God's got the glory. <laughs> got a truck that I drive to work in every day. How many of y'all can say that God has blessed you? Yeah. You know, it seems like if you read your Bible, we find out God's name is Jehovah. Yeah. Elohim. How many of you know God is provider? He is Jehovah Jireh. My provider. When you need something from God, He will provide for you. When you need a healing, God is Jehovah Rapha. It is not a, you should not be ashamed to call God by name. But we go through Jesus. To get to the Father. Amen? That's what Israel forgot about. They forgot about the God that saved them. They forgot about the God that changed their life. That renewed them. That set revival in their hearts. Set revival in their spirit. As Christians, we should wake up every day ready to give God praise. Amen? Amen. And then what happened? As we read through that scripture, let's find it here. Verse 16 says, They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron the saint of the Lord. The Israelites began to be, they didn't like Moses being a leader. They didn't like Aaron. They became angry. They didn't like the way that things were being run. They wanted to be in control. Started bad mouthing and fat talking to Moses and Aaron. Let me tell you what Christian people do. What we do when things don't go the way we like in a church service. We start bad mouthing our pastors. We start talking bad about other people in the church. We're supposed to be king's kids. We've got royal blood flowing through our veins. We get we act like the heathen. God has called us out to be separate. God has called us to be different. Why are we living like we're living in sin? Church, we should be encouraging our pastor, lifting up our pastors, praying for the leadership of our church. Not trying to tear them down and pray that God sends a new pastor. 
And I'm going to tell you what it means to be a pastor. You're a shepherd over a flock of believers. That man that sits back there that prepares his sermon each week, you think he does it for his health? He does it because that's where his heart is. That's what God's called him to do. How many of y'all have been like the Israelites? You've complained about your pastor. You've lied on him. You've told stories about him. Just like the Israelites did on Moses. You know what happened to those old boys? Let's look on down here. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and covered the entire company of Abiram. And there was a fire that was kindled in the company and the flame burned up the wicked. That paints a picture of what's to come, church. There's a day coming where the Bible says the sheep and the goats are going to be separated. The sheep to the right and the goats to the left. I'm glad to know that I'm in that right hand of God. Amen. I'm glad to know that I'm part of them sheep. That when Jesus comes back out and He starts separating us out, that I'm going to be a part of that wheat and not the tares. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to know that you're producing some fruit. Amen. Amen. Have you forgotten what God has done for you in your life? Have you been bitter? Have you been talking about people, the leadership in the church? You've been. I'm not preaching anything that I've not already preached to myself, folks. I have to re examine my life every day and say, Am I living a life that is pleasing to God? To be in revival. To be walking in a renewed spirit. I have to get up every day and ask God to help me. Every day I commit sins just like Israel did. I commit sins and then I forget how good God was to me and brought me through it. How many of you have ever got that God's brought you through something and then you get to the point you forgot about it and then you get in another mess and you're like, man, God, I'm sorry. You know what I do? I pray and I say, God... Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my mistakes. Forgive me for my shortcomings. Forgive me for those those things that I did that I'm not even aware of. When you speak evil against the man of God, according to this scripture, you're in danger of hell fire. Amen. When you speak negativity against the man of God, you have just claimed your ticket to an eternity in flames. Y'all still with me? Can you be forgiven? Amen, yes. I believe that man sitting back there on that back pew was ordained by God. I believe when Jesus was on the cross 2,000 years ago, he looked down through the ages of time and he saw this night. He saw this night and said there was going to be a revival that a crazy bald-headed preacher was going to come in there and tell you about Jesus. Tell me not to talk about the preacher to stop running around with the devil. Let me, let me tell you what God did. When you got saved, what's the Bible say happened? You received the Holy Spirit. And what happened? He made you a part of the bride. You're the bride of Christ. He's your husband. He's the king. We are the bride. But how many times are we running around cheating on God with the devil? Doing what the devil wants us to do rather than serving God. I know I have. I've been out whoring around with, with the devil a lot of times. Thinking nobody's ever going to know. Church folks aren't going to find out. Yeah, he sees, but he don't care. You know how many times I came home with the devil's lipstick and cologne all over me and then I came into church and wanted to praise God and act like nothing was wrong? How many times have you done that today as a Christian? How many times have you fallen short of the glory of God like the Bible says? Tonight it's time to re-examine our lives. It's time to re-examine where we are in our relationship with Christ. Because if you're to a point where it's all about ritual, get up Sunday morning, go to church Sunday night, go to church Wednesday, get up and go to work. When your life has become ritual,
ritual, you are now lost in religion. You have not got relationship. Your relationship is with Jesus. That's where your salvation will be found. Your salvation, like that song said, ain't going to be found with old Buddha. It's not going to be found over there with some little fat bald-headed monk somewhere over there in the mountains. It's going to be found with Jesus. If you ain't got Jesus in your life, you ain't got Jack. It's all about Jesus. You've been cheating on God with the devil. Church, I think right now, we need to take time to pray. God wouldn't have given me this message if there wasn't somebody in here that was struggling. You've forgotten what God has saved you from. Right now, you may be teetering on the fence. You got one foot in the church and one foot in the world, and you think you're going to be all right. Let me tell you what happened. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says no man comes to the Father except through him. Yeah. Do you know these Israelites built a golden calf that they began to worship? How many of y'all have ever built a golden calf to worship? If you say you haven't, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. No, you may not have melted down gold, but anything, anything that we put before God that becomes an idol in our life is sin. And what's the Ten Commandments say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Anything that we allow to take place of God in our life has become an idol. Just as Israel began to worship idols. It's time that we start clearing the idols out of our homes, church. I believe Jesus is about to step out on the clouds of glory. If you read your Bible and you flip through Revelation and you see what's going on in this world, all you've got to do is flip your TV on and you'll see what is going on. You'll see the book of Revelation coming to life right before our very eyes. And we're sitting back idle in our churches. We're not telling people about Jesus we're not telling them about the healings that you receive. We're not telling them about the miracles that have happened in the church. We're not telling people. We're not going out trying to reach the lost anymore because we're comfortable sitting in our padded pews or in here on our hardwood pews. Let me tell you what. It's time that God has called His church to go out into the highways and into the byways. It's no longer acceptable to sit on the pews and not tell people about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's all about Jesus. It's always ever been about Jesus. It's never been about me. It's never been about your pastor. It's never been about that guy that they was singing about in the song, the little fat guy. It's not ever been about them. It's always been about Jesus. I've never picked up a book that is said to be wholly inspired by God other than this book right here. I've never picked one up that said Buddha created this whole world. I've never read one of these books that said Muhammad created this world. But I do read that nothing that was created was not done. That it was, it was done through Jesus. That's the man I want to serve. Amen? Amen. I want to serve the God that when my grandma was sick on her deathbed in West Virginia, they called and said, you better come up and visit while you got the chance. They've given her 24 hours to live. Let me tell you about the kind of God that I serve. I left Alabama and I went to West Virginia. She stayed in that bed for a week. But they said 24 hours, Brother Danny. Let me tell you about something that I'm not going to forget about. The day that I left and had to come back to Alabama because dear old Granny hadn't passed away yet. The next day I get back to Alabama, my mother calls me and says, guess what happened? I said, what's that? She said, the doctors went around this morning and your grandma was sitting up on the side of the bed praising God. Said, Jesus came in and healed her. Said, she's ready to go home. Let me tell you, that's the kind of God that I serve. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I've made it up in my mind that His pain on that cross for me is not going to be in vain. I've called upon His name, folks. Heaven is mine to claim. I don't know about you. I don't know who you claim you that saved you, but let me tell you, if it wasn't Jesus, then you're on your way to hell. 
Amen. We focus too much of our energy on the devil. I did that for a long time. I focused myself on idols. I focused myself on things that were important to me. And I found myself intrigued with the thought of demons. And I told myself in my mind that I was going to study to know my enemy. So I could be better prepared when the attacks came. Sounds smart, doesn't it? Know your enemy. But I'm going to tell you what happens. When you start spending too much time with the devil, he'll show up to entertain your interest. I'm going to tell you tonight, you may think I'm crazy, I'm crazy, but I've seen demons. You know, some of you may have been blessed to be able to see the angels. I've never seen the angels. I've had to deal with the demons. Wake up one night in the middle of the night and you wake up and you're being held down in the bed and all you can see is black. Wait till you wake up and they're breathing down your neck. All because you wanted to have a little idol worship and not go to church. All because you thought you were going to be okay to miss that one Sunday. When we give the devil an opportunity to move in, don't you think he's going to take it? I want to encourage you tonight, church. I've not come here to beat you down. I've come here to encourage you to lift you up. Because if you remember, how many of you remember the last set of scripture in that? <laughs> and what I've read tonight, oh my Lord. It's time, church, that we give God our praise. It's time that we give God the glory for the good that He's done in our life. I never want to forget what Jesus saved me from. Amen? Amen. I want to be sold out for Jesus. How many of you say you want to be sold out? Let's go ahead and just say it with me. I want to be sold out for Jesus. How many of you ever heard that old song? But I'm sold out. Sold out. I'm sold out for Jesus. Do you know tonight that you're sold out for Jesus? Church, y'all going to think I'm crazy, but it's time for us to stop living our life in adultery. And y'all may think I'm crazy, but I'm going to tell you this is spiritual adultery when the church is committed. We have committed adultery against God because we are His bride. And we have been cheating with the devil. 